Hello, my name is Paul McCormick. Dr. Jeffrey Bruce and I are professors of neurosurgery at Columbia University College of Physicians and Surgeons in New York City. This video will demonstrate the removal of a high cervical intramedullary cavernous malformation through a far lateral approach. The patient is a 50 year old woman with the acute onset of left sided weakness and arm pain. T2 weighted cervical MR shows typical mixed signal intensity with surrounding rim of decreased signal intensity consistent with the diagnosis of a large intramedullary cavernous malformation at the C2 level. The patient had recently undergone a posterior laminectomy for planned resection, but the procedure had to be aborted due to SSEP and motor evoke potential changes during the midline myelotomy and initial dissection. The surgery is performed with the patient in a lateral position. A curvilinear skin incision is made behind the ear and extends down to the mid-cervical level. A transmuscular dissection is performed to expose the posterior lateral elements of C1 and C2. The operating microscope is then brought into the field. This is the initial exposure. The head is to the right. Here is the intact arch of C1. Just below the C1 arch is the previous laminectomy. Here is the left C2-3 facet joint. The dura is now opened and a detached dentate ligament is retracted to rotate the spinal cord. The slightly bluish discoloration of the ventral pia identifies the surface presentation of the cavernous malformation. A 6-0 proline traction suture is placed into the dentate ligament and clipped laterally to the dura. The left C2 ventral nerve root obscures the lesion and has been transected. The bluish discoloration of the ventral lateral pia is now well visualized. A linear myelotomy is now performed directly over the lesion. The trajectory of the far lateral approach allows us to work almost orthogonally rather than tangentially to the ventral lateral lesion. This greatly facilitates the dissection. Gentle blunt dissection deepens the mylotomy and begins to define the malformation margins. The mylotomy is extended caudally with micro scissors. Further blunt micro dissection develops the mylotomy and exposes the malformation. A 6-0 proline peel traction suture is clipped laterally to the dura to improve visualization of the malformation. Gentle microdissection is used to develop a plane between the cavernous malformation and the surrounding spinal cord. Small feeding vessels or fibrous adhesions are isolated, cauterized, and divided.
The margins of the lesion are gently and circumferentially developed with an alternating traction and counter-traction technique with microdissectors and a microsucker. These malformations are not particularly vascular, but they are friable, which will often result in a piecemeal removal. Once the resection is complete, the hemosiderin stain resection bed is carefully inspected under high magnification to identify any residual lesion. Hemostasis is then secured and the resection bed is lined with a thin layer of surgicel. Once meticulous hemostasis is achieved, the retraction sutures are removed. The dura is closed with a running locked 40 silk suture, and the remainder of the wound is closed in layers over a hemovac drain. The patient had a stable postoperative course with improvement in her left sided weakness. A postoperative spinal accessory nerve palsy improved over the next four months. An early postoperative MR shows the area of resection and a small epidural fluid collection that illustrates the surgical approach corridor.